When we sample HIV from a patient, we normally take samples from the blood plasma. This is relatively easy to do, and it allows us to see the type of variation in the viral population and check and see if there are any pre-existing drug resistance mutations that might interfere with treatment. However, some previous studies have suggested that HIV in the blood is not always the same as HIV in other parts of the body. In our study, we set out to see if the evolution of drug resistance looks uniform across tissues. Because humans are difficult to sample, we examined data from formococcus infected with rt ship which is a simian immunodeficiency virus, or SIV, with one critical region, reverse transcriptase, replaced with the HIV version. The macaques were then treated with normal HIV drugs that target reverse transcriptase. When certain mutations happen in this region, the virus can become drug resistant. We then sampled rt shiv from these macaques over the course of treatment to observe if and how drug resistance would emerge. To compare this process spatially, we also took shiv samples from multiple locations in the body. There are samples from the blood plasma, but also from the lymph nodes, the gut, the vagina, and white blood cells, or PBMCs. And we can look at how drug resistance emerged in each of them. So what did we see? First, we saw that drug-resistant viruses quickly overcame the drug-sensitive viruses in several of the macaques. This happened across tissues. However, we also saw that among these drug-resistant viruses, there was evidence that drug-resistance mutations themselves happened multiple times. We can tell that this happened because sometimes the mutations are coded differently, like an A in some viruses and a T in other viruses, and sometimes they are genetically linked to other mutations. But did the evolution of resistance in the blood really look the same as other tissues? Well, sort of. We frequently observe viruses with the exact same set of mutations across tissues. This points to abundant migration. However, even though the tissues harbored viruses with the same mutations, those viruses were often at different frequencies. We computed statistical tests to determine if those frequencies were actually different or just noise, and found that often, the differences seemed to be real. In particular, the gut and the vagina often look different from the blood plasma, and also different from each other. So, even though there is enough migration to spread the same viruses around the body, there is not so much migration that they equilibrate completely. Tissues don't all acquire resistance in the same way. That these mutations behave this way also gives us information on the relative strengths of the forces of selection and migration, but that's still a work in progress. What does this mean for treating patients? Sampling the blood to assess drug resistance mutations may give you a good idea of the types of resistance mutations that are present, but it may not give you a good idea of their relative frequencies in different parts of the body, particularly the gut and the vagina. Since HIV is often spread sexually, this could be important in tracking and understanding transmission chains. For more details and to learn about our full results, check out our paper in PLOS Pathogens.